Yes. This is my first chance, uh, uh, you know, being able to work with this gentleman, so I'm excited to watch him along with you guys. Uh, he has been here uh, before. He's been doing comedy for a long time. He's traveled all over the world. He uh, was the $10,000 winner on America's Funniest People, man. He has been, he's been everywhere, done it all, and he decided to come back. So right off the bat, that's points in his favor for you guys. So give it up for the very funny Mr. Steve Barkley. right there did a great job for you didn't he wow wow terrific great wow thanks for coming out this is great here we are in beautiful Carson City gateway to Sparks <laughs> what a great drive I came over the hill from California today and and uh, I, I you know beautiful scenery coming over and I just kept thinking to myself are they ever going to get done working on the highways around here my God, I think you've got some foreman who goes, hey, hey, Larry, come here, buddy. I'll tell you what, it's about 5 o'clock. Why don't you block off them two lanes right there? <laughs> Hell, block them all off. <laughs> and we just sit there in our cars going, well, th this is bullshit. <laughs> great to be here, great to be here. Whoa. Oh, there we go. Well, if you can find something that tight, marry it. <laughs> that was a naughty joke. That was naughty. It was a naughty joke. I, 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 got a, I use a cane, and uh, I got in a car accident about eight years ago, and I got a bunch of crushed discs and stuff now, so I have to use a cane, and I hate using a cane. Uh, but one thing about having a cane is it attracts attention to you. And when you've been in show business as long as I have, people begin to recognize you. And uh, before the show tonight, I was out in the lobby and I could, there was a couple staring at me and I knew they recognized me. And they came up to me before the show and they said, Colonel, we really love your chicken. <laughs> and uh, what the hell do you say to that? You know, what, what do you say to that? So I gave him a wing and a drumstick and... Uh, I look like Buffalo Bill and, and Colonel Sanders had a baby, something, something like that. I must have freaked the Indians out back in the old days, you know. And, yeah. I, don't, I don't know why, but he makes me want to eat the chicken. That was, that was my Native American impression. That, that, that gets me beat up in some of the casinos, and especially the Indian casinos. They came up to me after the show and they go, we didn't think that was very funny. So now we're going to beat your white ass. <laughs> Rhythmically. Boom, 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 boom. Like that. So on the way here, there was a fly buzzing around in my car. And, and he got in my car when I left home. And so I didn't let him out until I got to Carson City. And I'm thinking, he's got to be confused. I mean, can you imagine? He's calling, he's calling home, Carol, I don't know where the hell I am. All I know is they're doing a lot of work on the highways up here. I want chicken for some reason. I don't know why. You can't go anywhere without slot machines. Oh, my God. This is nuts. Let's put this right there. Have some vodka. <laughs> oh. oh, look at that. That, just, that opens up. That's, and that, if the little lid stays right there, that way when you drink it, it cuts you. <laughs> well, it's great to be here again, and it's, it's, uh, I'm kind of celebrating because it was uh, 10 years ago today that I married my best friend. And thank you, thank you. And it really pissed off my wife. Uh, but Dave and I thought it was funny and we just went ahead and did it anyway and uh, she'll get over it eventually, you know. She hates the anniversary though. I hate it, I hate when you did that, you know. I don't care. So, but it's great to be here in beautiful Carson City. And I'm, I'm down the street, I'm staying at the Hard Man. The Hard, what the, what's a great name, which is ironically is the same name as my penis. And, and so, so I felt very comfortable checking in. And 
and out, and then checking in, and then out, and then checking in, and then out. And it's not the name of my penis. I'm sorry. I, I'd like to apologize. That's, I would never name my penis Hard Man. It's Gigantor. And uh, it's not Gigantor. It's not. I wish, I wish it was Gigantor. It might have been that when I was younger, but you know what I'm talking about. You get older and there's, there's, there's shrinkage. And, and I got three inches of German steel right now. It's like, looks like a short stack of nickels. It's not funny. I swear to God, it looks like a scared turtle. You know what I'm talking about. You haven't seen your penis in five years, I bet. I just, you know it's there somewhere, you know. I just like, hate, hate that. Hate getting old, hate getting old. Getting old sucks. Because we're not old inside, our spirits stay young. But our bodies get old. And I'm at the point now where I drop something, I just look at it and go, do I really need that? <laughs> you know? I trick my dog now into picking shit up for me. I go, get that, get it, get it, get that. Get it for daddy, get it, get it. Doesn't work for the cat though. Cat just goes, oh God, you're disgusting. Cats are just, they're, they're just different. They're so different from dogs, you know. Dogs, dogs will get in trouble with you. You know, you can walk up to your dog and go, let's get naked and walk downtown. The dog will go, yep, let's do it. That sounds good. I'm right with you, buddy. I'm right there. Dog, dogs will do that. Cats, cats just go, God, you're pathetic. Just eat, fix me something to eat, will you? If cats had thumbs, they, just, we would, they would not need us. You know, it's crazy, 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 crazy. So what are you two lovely ladies out doing tonight? Look at you, just sitting out, having a, just a girl's night out tonight? Yeah. You're not even drinking. Yeah. What's that? What's in there? Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary, and you're just drinking straight vodka. <laughs> straight vodka. Uh-huh, I like that. That's, that's very good. I like that. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm happy, though, to be back in Kansas, uh, Kansas City. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, thanks for coming tonight, folks, and, and uh, I think about getting old. Did I do the set already? Did I already do the show? I can't remember. <laughs> Carson City, that's what I meant, Carson City. I, I'm glad to be anywhere, actually, because I just flew home recently on Delta, and, and it's, not, it's not that bad. I, I joined Delta's Frequent Survivor Program, and, uh, which is a good deal, because one more crash, I go to Europe for nothing, and you <laughs> can't beat that. You know what Delta stands for, right? Don't even leave the airport. That's what it, of course, when it comes to me, it means don't expect the luggage to arrive. That, that's what it means. My luggage goes on vacation by itself. I get postcards. We're in Puerto Rico. I hate flying. Flying is not fun anymore. I don't know if you've flown anywhere lately, but it's not like the old days. Remember the old days? Your friends could come to the airport with you. They could go to the gate with you. You know, it was fun. Hey, goodbye, hugs and stuff. Now it's like, you know, take your shoes off, take your computer out of the bag, take your pants off. You know, I made that last one up because I swear to God, I can be butt naked and I will still set that metal detector off. You know, I am enjoying the full body cavity surges, though. I got to be honest. You know, I mean, they're going. I don't know what's in there. Keep looking. I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> wow! Wow! You are good. I, I, I'm not even gay, but if I was, you'd be the one. I'm not kidding you. And they do all that crap for security, you know, because they want to. They want to protect us from terrorism. I'm not afraid of terrorists. I'm an American. And I, 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 I'm just not afraid of terrorism. Just, it doesn't bother. I'm afraid of drunk airline pilots. That's, that's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. A few months ago, those America West pilots got drunk, and they were going to fly the plane. They actually made it into the cockpit, and one of the stewardesses reported them, and they, they, they pulled them out. Because, you know, you get drunk, and you think, I can drive. You know. <laughs> yeah. Hey, shut up. I can drive. The hell's, what the hell is wrong with you? I, if I could find my car, I could drive. You know, and so I, you know, you, you get that, you get that drunk bravery, you know, and, and everything. That's what these guys got, you know. They, so they took them out of the cockpit, and I saw their trial. I watched their trial on court TV. See, you good folks go to work every day, and and <laughs> I, I stay home and test out medical marijuana, and, and uh, I do it for you. 
and and uh, they showed the video surveillance from the airport bar where these <laughs> two geniuses were drinking and over a six and a half hour period these guys drank ready for this 27 drinks apiece 27 drinks my god can you imagine I mean I could understand eight or nine you know because what are you gonna hit after you get up there there's nothing up there but air you know you don't have to worry about it a bird maybe you know and these are always the guys that I get let me tell you a story I was recently working up in Portland Oregon I was working the mildew festival up there and and uh, no shut up it's very popular up there it's, they have a big parade and everybody's in green and and uh, I was on the Lysol float and <laughs> and I flew out of Sacramento and I'm I'm so freaked out now about flying because I've been flying for a lot of years you know and I figured the odds are gonna catch up to me so I get on the airplane now I just lay down across all three seats and buckle myself in you know which pisses off the other two people you know I'll be honest with you you know but, I don't care, safety first, that's my motto. And, and you know how you get settled into your seat and the captain comes on the intercom, kind of talks to you about the flight? This guy comes on and he goes, <coughs> Oh, Jesus, what a hangover. Okay. Oh, boy, this, this is no good. Uh, hey, hang on. Hey, boy, hang on a second here, folks. Oh, boy, Larry cracked the window. We got to get some air up here in this cockpit. <laughs> Woo! Okay. Uh, folks, what do you say we just cut the crap and take off, huh? <laughs> what, I got to do it? All right, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Well, welcome to Delta Flight. Um, I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't matter at this point, though, does not I mean, the doors are locked. Where are you going to go, you know? <laughs> All right, well, today we're going to fly from Sacramento to L.A. Portland. Portland. We're going to go to Portland. <laughs> we're going to Portland? <laughs> really? Okay, well, all right, we are going to Portland. Um, well, apparently I brought the wrong flight plan, so <laughs> we're just pretty much going to follow I-5 most of the way up this afternoon. Uh couple things about today's flight we're going to be cruising at an altitude of 150 feet so <laughs> if if you got a camera you're going to get some bitching photos let me tell you <laughs> plus it helps if i can read those road signs you know you don't want to end up in bakersfield like yesterday <laughs> i hate that town a uh, couple of things about the aircraft itself you probably notice that the restrooms are located on the outside of the aircraft and <laughs> If you have to go, just tell Shelly and she'll tie a little bungee cord to you right before you <laughs> step out that door. We don't want to lose you. A um, couple of things about the aircraft itself. You probably know the little tiny compartment directly above your head. And in the unlikely event of a water landing, God, I hate those. Uh, a Hobie surfboard will drop down into your lap. So have a good flight, and we'll see you when we get to L.A. Portland, we're going to go to Portland, you know, you know, pretty much at this point, I want off the plane, you know, and, and they, they won't let me off the plane because we're already out on the runway taxiing and we can't take off because we've got Mexicana Air taxiing ahead of us. You know, Mexicana Air does not taxi. They just cruise up and down the runway, you know, <laughs> wings are about this far off the ground, you know, hydraulics, the plane's going up and down the runway like this. I look over, the pilot's hanging his elbow out the window. He's honking the horn. <laughs> you ever flown Mexicano before? You ever flown that? Yeah? Is there a movie on your flight? I know. No, not me. But I did win 50 bucks on the cockfight. I, I was happy about that. That was, that was pretty cool. It was wild. We got down near Mazalan. We had some turbulence. Pinatas dropped out of the ceiling. I was like, what oxygen? <laughs> Took her 20 minutes to get everybody blindfolded. That's not fair, you know. <laughs> Coming home was a nightmare. We get to the California-Mexican border. The pilot tries to fly the plane under the fence. And uh, <laughs> that is so politically incorrect, you know. <laughs> it's so funny because after the show, always the bus boys and the waiters are going, we're going to beat the shit out of you, man. <laughs> right after the Native Americans. 
Why, I get beat up by everybody. <laughs> I don't discriminate. <laughs> Everyone gets a punch at me. <laughs> so it's starting to get cool up here, starting to get chilly. Winter's coming. It's officially fall. Yesterday in California, it was 87. I love it. When I, I moved to California in 1971. I hitchhiked out there. I was going to stay for three weeks, and I got out to California, and I went, I'm never going back. I'm going to hell with this. I'm staying. You know, and the people that I was staying with said, we don't know you. Who, who are you? <laughs> You've got to leave. You can't stay here. And I said, but I love it. I love it when Californians bitch about, about winter. That just killed it, because I'm from Chicago. You know, and I, I had a buddy of mine, I had a, a buddy of mine a few days ago, he goes, I hate winter, man. I, I can't stand the thought that winter's coming. I go, yeah, those, those winters are tough out here in California. Oh, my God, it's down to 45 degrees. We're doomed. Ah, the windshield of the BMW steamed up. Run for your lives. It gets cold here. You get snow. You get, I was coming over Donner Pass, and I was just thinking about that. Looking at the mountains, I mean, good God. Can you imagine those people coming across in the Rockies and Conestoga wagons and stuff and the Donner Party? Was, what a bunch of dummies they were, huh? All they would have had to do is they could have jumped on 80. They could have come straight to Reno. <laughs> Not thinking. <laughs> Sitting around deciding which kid they're going to eat. You know, like, well, Timmy, we took a vote, and it looks like it's going to be you. <laughs> I don't want to be eaten. Well... Too bad. <laughs> I love California, man. When, when I was a kid, I used to watch TV, and all the TV shows were made in California. And I, I'd see palm trees and the ocean and everything, and that's the first thing I wanted to do when I came, came to California. I wanted to touch a palm tree, and I wanted to see the ocean and everything, and, and it's the first thing I did when I got out there. I went to went to uh, Huntington Beach, and I was, oh, this is so great. And I walked in the ocean and, and got all wet and everything, and, and, and I touched a palm tree. And then and years later, I, I, I got married. My wife and I used to live in Walnut Creek. We had a palm tree in our front yard. And it was like, oh, my God, I've got a palm tree. It was great. I could, I could be at the ocean in 30 minutes. It was, it was amazing. It was just it was great. I just, I just absolutely loved it. And I... I just, uh, it's just the, the greatest thing in the world. And, and, and my wife just ruined it. And, and uh, because, you know, marriage is kind of like that. You know, you, you, you meet somebody and you, you fall in love. You're a young couple. Are you guys married? You married? You just, they, they look at each other. No, no, we're not. Are we married? No, we're not? Okay, all right. Well, we can still have sex then because we're not married, right? Because once you get married, there's no more sex. That's, just, that's it. It's gone. It's like that. It's, it's like that. You're just dating? You guys just dating? Just how long have you been dating? He looks at her. He doesn't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. I call her up. She's still there. She answers. I don't know. How long have you been dating? Almost 10 years. Almost 10 years? Holy shit, honey. 10 years? I'm going to tell you something right now. You control the gates to the Ponderosa. You see, and you can close the ranch anytime you want. <laughs> just close the Ponderosa up and just send Hop Sing out to the front and go, Mr. Cartwright say you can't come in no more. <laughs> see, now, that's my Asian impression. Now I'm going to get the shit beat out of me by the Asians. There's a line forming out there. We're going to beat the shit out of the comedian after the show. <laughs> Ten years? Wow. Do you want to get married? No, don't look at him. You know, you guys look at him. You guys look at each other. Look at yeah. 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 All right. All right. Who's she? Who's that? Yeah. Mom. Don't you have any say to this? Just look at him and go. That's it. No more. They're happy? Okay. All right. Yeah, you're right. Don't get married. And I, I say that in a serious way because, because marriage is, and you'll find this out someday if you, get, if you do get married, marriage is, is a relationship, <clears throat> a very special relationship where one person is right all the time. 
and the other person is the husband. <laughs> like, I had no idea that there was a wrong way to put the milk back in the refrigerator <laughs> until I got married. There are towels in our bathroom that I'm not allowed to touch. <laughs> and there's also little cakes of soap that I'm not to use. Those are for guests. <laughs> Get your fucking hands off those. Those are for guests. Don't touch those towels. Those are for guests. I put the bread the wrong way. I put it back the wrong way. I do a lot of things wrong. <laughs> I, I was living in Walnut Creek and Bay Area, comedy everywhere, San Francisco, Mill Valley, all over, Danville, comedy shows everywhere. One weekend, my wife says to me, I want to go to the Scottish Games. I want to, I want to go to the Scottish Games. And I go, yeah, because I'm part Scottish. I go, yeah, I'd like to do that. Yeah, let's go. So we, we go to the Scottish Games in Pleasanton. As we walk in, there's a, a great big giant pavilion, birds of prey, hawks and eagles and vultures and owls and falcons. And my wife goes, ooh, I want to, I want to, I want to see the hawks. I go, oh, okay, but I want, to, I want to go see the caber toss and stuff. And she goes, well, go, just go. I want, to, I want to see the hawks. I go, okay. So I left, and I came back about an hour later, and she goes, just go, go walk. I want to see the hawks. Go, go. And I, I went, oh, okay, I'm glad we came together. And, and, <laughs> and this is fun. This is a lot of fun, a lot of fun here. So I, I walked around some more, and, and uh, a guy came up to me in a kilt. And he goes, what is your wife, you dumbass, huh? And, and uh, he said that in Scottish. And, and so she stayed with the, with the hawk people all, all the whole day. And so we're driving home and she's quiet. And you guys know, you know, when your wife is quiet, it's all over. <laughs> and we're driving, we're driving home and she goes, I want to do that. I go, you, you, want to, you want to do what? She goes, I want to be a falconer. And I go, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Sure. And I want to be a cowboy. So she, she, she did. She became a falconer. She, she went out and caught a hawk. How the hell do you catch a hawk? I mean, you see them. You people see the hawks. They're on the telephone poles, and they're looking down, you know. And they're looking down, and they're thinking, I'm going to kill somebody. Because and, 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 they're dangerous. They've got big, sharp claws and beaks, and they, they will kill you. And so she, she became a falconer. She comes walking in the house one day. She's got a hawk. I go, holy shit, where'd you get that? She goes, I caught it. And I go, I am as scared of you. I actually said a scared. I said that. I'm a grown man. I said a scared. So she goes, I want you to help me train it. You know, yeah. And I said, no. Because you know, they are dangerous. And, 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 and yeah. I don't want to do that. And, and so, so she said, um, you are going to help me train it. Because uh, I control the Ponderosa. And, and, and. And I went, good point, good point. That's a good point. Good, good point for you. Okay. And, and see, she, she's got this thing with animals. She's, she's like, when I first met her, she was an optician downtown Walnut Creek. And, and I would, I would <clears throat> go to her office, and, and we'd have lunch. And we'd go to little outdoor cafes, and little birds would land at our, at our table. I mean, she'd be talking to little birds like a Disney movie. They're wearing little clothes and stuff going, hey. You know, and I'm going, wow. You know, I mean, we'd be out walks at night, and strange dogs walk up to her. And just, you know, they look at me, and they go, hey. Like this is, we were, we were up here in Nevada one time, and we were looking at the wild mustangs. They got wild mustangs out here. And there was a corral. She walks into a corral of wild mustangs, and they all run away. And she stands there. She turns her back to them. They surrounded her. And, and like the, the, the head of the mustangs, I don't know what you call it, but the boss, uh, walk, walks up, it was a mare, and, 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 <laughs> and, and, and is, is like nudging her. She takes the horse's face in her hands and she's whispering to the horse. She's like, <laughs> and the horse is looking over at me, you know, and, and, and the horse looks over and goes, he, he does look like Colonel Sanders. And, 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 <laughs> And I don't know what to do. I'm out of chicken at that point. I don't know what to say. 
And she's got this ability, this, this way with animals. It's, 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 it's uncanny, this, uh, this power that she has. <clears throat> and, and it's because she's, she's a, a witch. She's a witch, that's what she is. Yeah, and, and, and not, like, not like Glinda, the good witch, you know. She's, she's like a, ah, a booga booga witch, you know, like that. You know, I'm watching TV, she goes, does your back hurt? And I go, no. She goes, okay, how about now? I go, wow. What are you doing? So she goes, she goes, okay, I want you to help me train this hawk. And you've seen the, 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 the movies of the Falconers. They have the big glove, and, and they, they, woo, they blow the whistle, and the hawk flies and lands on the glove. Well, you've got to train them to do that. And the way you do it, you have two Falconers, and you tie a long leash to the, to the, to the hawk's foot. It's called a creance. And, and you fly the bird back and forth. You get a little piece of meat here and a whistle, and you go, whoo! You blow the whistle, and you go like that, and the hawk goes, oh, there's something to eat. And he flies to the falconer. Then the other falconer does the thing, and the hawk flies back and forth, back and forth. And you do that for two or three months, and then the hawk, you know, learns that there's food every time he sees that. And so finally, one day, you, un you let the leash go. You, you let the hawk go, and the hawk hopefully flies off, and you never have to do that shit again, <laughs> you know. You know, and then you're just done with that nonsense, you know. You can get back to real life and shit, okay? But unfortunately, our hawk stayed, you know. And so she goes, all right, now put the, put the meat right there and, and blow the whistle. And I go, no! And so she comes, she comes walking up to me, and she's like 5'4", she's like and she's got these big root beer colored eyes, and she takes my face in her hands, and she gets really close to me, and she goes, don't be a pussy. And I go, oh, okay, now I feel better. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. I, I feel good now. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Pep Talk. Thank you. Yee, thank you. And so, so she, she, she walks away about 100 feet, and she goes, all right, blow the whistle. And, and so I, I go, whoo, I blow the whistle, and I go like this. And the hawk launches off from her arm, and it's flying towards me. And they're so big, and it looks like slow motion. And, this, and, and they've got this, this hawk face. And it's just looking at you like, you know, like, ah! it's flying towards me. You know, and I'm just, I'm captivated. It's like a, like a National Geographic special, you know, and I'm, I'm going, wow, you know. And I can hear way off in the distance, hold the glove up. And, and this big, giant hawk is flying, you know, right at me and everything. I'm just, I'm just captivated. And that hawk, let me tell you, that hawk hit me in the face so hard. And I was like, yaga! You know. So we're at the hospital. And, and, and apparently, I was making way too much noise. And, and we had this great doctor. He was from India. And, and he got really close to me. And he goes, don't be a pussy. And, and he goes... Now the Indians are going to beat me up after the show. They're going to go, we didn't like your impression. That's bullshit, man. Now we're going to punch you right in the mouth. And, and, so, and so they got the talons out. And, and, uh, and now she's a, she's a full-time falconer. Now she's a master falconer. Now I call her my falcon wife. And, and, and so now we have, we have five hawks and four falcons. And, and that's what she does for a living. She flies, she flies birds. And uh, she, she's, she has a favorite falcon that sleeps on a perch next to her side of the bed in our bedroom. It's big, it's a, and it's a hybrid falcon. It's a combination. It's a jeer peregrine prairie falcon. So it's huge. It's big. And it's big and white, and it's got speckles, and it's, it's huge. And we feed these, these hawks and falcons what are called coternix quail. These are the same quail that when you go to an expensive restaurant, same kind of quail. And that's what we feed these birds. And the alarm goes off every morning about 4.30, and she gets up because she's got to go to the falconry center where she works. And, and uh, sometimes she hits the wrong button. She hits the snooze button. And she gets up and gets dressed and goes off, and then the, the alarm comes back on, and I sleep naked. And so I have to reach over the falcon to shut the alarm off. And I just found out recently that my penis looks exactly like a coternix quail and 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 th those falcons 
they hang on. They, they don't, they, they, they get you. They, yeah, you know, like that. And they don't let go. They got those, they, yeah, like that. And you have no idea how hard it is to get a pair of Levi 501s on with a Falcon hooked to your <laughs> junk, you know. And, and uh, so I'm at the hospital again. And, 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 and the doctor goes, oh, the pussy man is back again. And, and so... It, things were going so good. You know, I, I had a palm tree, I had a, I had a swimming pool in the, in the back, and, and, then, and then one day she comes home, she goes, guess what? And I go, I, I don't know. And she goes, I got a job at a falconry center. And I go, wow, really? She goes, yeah. I go, where is it? And she goes, it's in Browns Valley. And I go, where's that? And she goes, it's up by Marysville. And I go, well, that's going to be a long drive every day. You know? And she goes, no, no, we're going to move. And I go, no, 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 I have a palm tree. I go, no, if, if, you go out, if you go out the front door and go to the right a little bit, there's a palm tree you can touch. And, and comedy, that's what I do. And I, I do it for a long time. I've been doing comedy a long time. That's where all the gigs are. I, so, honey, no, we're not, we're not going to move, you know. And, and, you know, I said... In, in marriage, you know, you, you, you compromise, you work things out together, you talk about things. You, one person just can't make all the rules, you know. Yes, they can. And, and, and so I said, you know, let's look at all the pros and cons. And she said, no. And, and, and uh, so we moved and, and uh, we, we couldn't find a place in Browns Valley. Uh, we looked at a whole bunch of different places, and so she said to the real estate agent, well, why don't we move farther up into the foothills where Steve's career will just die completely? And, 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 and the real estate agent said, well, that's a good idea. So, <clears throat> so now we live way up in the foothills, uh, in the Sierra Mountains foothills, up way up in the mountains, and um, we're way up there. And... <laughs> We, we're mountain people now, and and uh, now I'm telling jokes to raccoons, and, and 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 that's not good, you know, because you know you can't tell if the raccoons pissed at you or laughing, you know, like that, you know, and 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 it's it, you know what I should not complain because our neighbors, uh, the people that live somewhere down the road. Um, <laughs> came over to our house and they dropped off an abandoned car in our front yard and broke all the windows out so we didn't have to do it and then gave us a, a marijuana growing starter kit and a pit bull puppy. So we're feeling very at home now up, up in the mountains. And, and after, living, after living in Walnut Creek, it's a big change, uh, and you got to get used to it. It's quiet, for one thing. It's very quiet. In the summertime, you know, when you're sitting out in the front yard uh, trying to avoid the skunks, uh, you can hear the meth labs exploding off in the distance, you know. <laughs> Ooh, that was close. That was a close one, you know. And, and, uh, and we're trying to, you know, we're trying to take in all the local community events because we live very close to Marysville, which has a large homeless uh, population now, and which is great if you're single, uh, because if you're dating a, a homeless chick at the end of the night, you can just pretty much drop her off anywhere. You know, you just pull up to the corner and go, get out of the car, Shelly, and, and uh, no, I don't have any spare change, and, and, uh, and I know that's, that's, that's terrible taste, but yet yeah, you'll tell that joke Monday at work, you know. And you know what? And those homeless people, they care about each other. They really do. They, they have a really tight-knit little community because when I was driving over here, I, was, I could see under the bridge in Marysville. And you know what? You know what? They were giving each other COVID shots. And, and I, I thought... <laughs> I have a room reserved in hell. <laughs> and then we, we also live close to Linda which is the meth capital of California. And, and uh, so my wife and I, every year now, we go to the meth festival. And, uh, and you, know, you take the kids, you know, hey kids, you can ride the tweaker. And, and uh, you put your, put your kid on the back of one of those guys. You know, they, don't, they don't stop walking. You know, you got time to go get a corn dog and come back, you know. 
<laughs> and, if, and you know what? I'd like to apologize right now. I should not call them tweakers. That's mean. I should call them by their, their proper name, and that is Mexican Americans. And, 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 and <laughs> I know. The tweakers are lining up. I'm going to beat the fuck out of that guy, man. <laughs> then we, every year we go over to uh, Olivehurst for the running of the pit bulls, and, and that's a lot of fun. I've never, seen, I, I, I've never seen a community or communities with so many pit bulls. Oh, my God. You go to the Walmart over in, in Linda, and they go, paper, plastic, or a pit bull. And... and uh, <laughs> A pit bull will carry your groceries out to the car for you and then bite you in the calf. <laughs> so, so we moved, and, and uh, so then she's became, she became a falconer, and then she says, uh, hey, you know what? <clears throat> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go hunting. I'm going to go hunting with these hawks. Cause we, you can hunt with these hawks. You can catch pheasant and, and jackrabbit and cottontail and stuff like that. So I want to hunt. And I said, okay. And uh, she says, so I want to get a hunting dog. And I go, okay, well, we can get a lab. She goes, no, I don't want to get a lab. I go, they're good hunting dogs. We should get a lab. She goes, no, you know what? I've been doing a lot of research on it, and I found a dog. They're from Scotland, and they're called, they're called LQ pointers, and they're great for falconry. They're really great, so I'd like, I'd like to get one of those. I go, how, how much does an L LQ pointer cost? And she goes, you know, you really can't look at it that way. And, and, and I go, I go oh, oh, no, you can. You you. you you, I, I'm looking at it that way. I, I'm, I've got like laser eyes. Ah, yeah, that's that's how I'm. I'm that's how I'm looking at it. How much? How much is this dog? She goes, you know, it's it's not really that much because we're going to have the dog a long time, and 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 you know, it's it's not that much. I go, how much is the dog? And she goes, it's like I don't know, it's like fifteen fifteen hundred. And I go, fifteen hundred dollars for a dog? I go, no, no. No, we can get a lab for 150 bucks, and they're great dogs. They go in the water, and they, and, they, and they bring whatever you kill back, and, and great dogs. And they, they lay next to you, and you can pet them, and yeah, let's get a lab. And, you know, so I said, no. You know, I gave in about moving up here, and I'm drawing the line about the stupid LQ pointer from Scotland. You know, that's out. You know, so we got the dog. And and he and he's from Scotland, and and he even barks in Scottish. He goes ah rough rough rough. He goes, but freedom. Half his face is painted blue. So so we have this pointer, and so about eight weeks go go by, and she goes, you know what? You're, you're gone, and, and I'm gone at the Falconry Center, and the dog's lonely, so we should get another dog. I go, we're not getting another pointer. I, I go, that's out. She goes, well, let's just look around. And I, I said, uh, you know, because that's what I say. I, I, I just, uh, you know, because that's what happens. And because and, after a while, you, you know, they, they, you're, you're, the wife just, like, just crushes your soul, and you, you lose the ability to talk. You just, ah, ah, you know. And so uh, we're coming back. We were coming back from Linda because we, uh, we had to get some meth. And, and, and so we're coming back, and there's this old guy parked alongside the road. He's got a cardboard sign that says, Chihuahua Puppy for Sale. And she goes, oh, let's stop. And I go, no, we are not getting a Chihuahua. That, because you know who invented the Chihuahuas, the Nazis. You know, they, they took a piranha and a bunch of dust bunnies and, and, and combined them together. A horrible experiment, and, and uh, like that, and I said, "We're not, no, you know, no way." So we're driving home with the Chihuahua, and and we got him, and he's like just a living hell, you know, he's just a nightmare dog. Not so, my wife figured, why not get another one? So, so now we have two Chihuahuas and a Scottish Pointer, and and and. Um, they hate me. Uh, my wife and I have we are, we have our own chairs. She has her chair, and I have my chair. And her chair is like right out front, in front of the, the TV set, so she can see. And my chair is back in the corner somewhere, where they don't have to look at me. And 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 because that's how they like it. And and every once in a while, you know, the Chihuahuas will turn around and go. 
You ever been given a finger by a chihuahua? It's like, <laughs> like that. They have little hands. They have little hands. So a couple of weeks ago, it was raining. It was raining like hell. And, and uh, so I, I, I got to get the mail. And see, the mailman doesn't come to your house when you live up in the mountains. You know, you people live in civilization. The mailman comes. And, and, and I freaked out our mailman the other day. I, I came up to the door completely naked. <laughs> and it freaked him out really bad. And I don't know if it was the fact that I was naked or the fact that I knew where he lived. You know, I, you know that was, yeah, because I was like, hey, you know, <laughs> the look on his face. <laughs> so he doesn't come anymore. So... So in order to get our mail, I have to walk down a dirt road to a metal box and, and then dicker with a Yeti, you know, to get our, our mail. And so I open up the door, and the pointer goes, oh, look at the rain, I love that. Boom, he's out the door. And the chihuahuas run up to the front, and they go, oh, I'm not going out in that. It's too wet, man. <laughs> now the Mexicans are going to beat me up again, you know. And so, so... so uh-oh, Oscar's back. <laughs> He's backstage going, get the hell off. <laughs> Just get off. You're done. These stupid jokes. Get off the stage. So I didn't have time to talk. I was, all right, all right. I'm just going to talk more about marriage. <laughs> That's your wife, buddy? That's your wife right there? How long have you been married? Oh, God bless you. That is great, man. 45 years. That is terrific. That is great. And that's her lover next to her right there. Yeah, I know. Reminds me of an old, old joke, this old Jewish couple. They've been married for 40 years, and she's, she's never had an orgasm. And, and so they go, to a, they go to a therapist, and the therapist says, okay, this is what you got to do. You've got to include someone in your lovemaking. I want you to get a really big, handsome young man, and he's going to stand over you, and he's going to wave a towel over the top of you while you make love, and you'll have an orgasm that way. So they go, okay, all right. So they're, they're, they get together to get some guy, beautiful young man, big blonde, you know, muscles and stuff, and he's standing over him, he's waving the towel, and they're making love, and she's still not having an orgasm. So the old man goes, all right, I'll tell you what, you make love to my wife, I'll wave the towel. So he's, he's waving the towel. She has tr four orgasms in a row. Boom, boom, boom. The old man looks at the young guy, he goes, that's the way you wave a towel. Changes. Things change after 45 years, don't they? I know. There's no more spontaneity. There's, there's no more sex, you know. Yeah. You use that Viagra? You like the Viagra? Me neither. No. I like, I like Cialis. I, I do. No, I do, because if my wife doesn't want to make love, I just get in the car and go see Alice. And, and that's, that's what I do. Right, right there. Right there. Yeah. Right there. I use Viagra for my sunburn. It doesn't help the pain, but it keeps the sheets off my legs. And so... I... My sister works at an old folks home back in Illinois. I was talking to her the other night. She goes, every night before we put the old guys to bed, we give them a Viagra. I go, really? Are they sexually active? She goes, no, it just keeps them from rolling out of bed at night. It's a little kickstand. My wife said to me the other night, she goes, when you talk to me, you make me wet. I go, really? Do I arouse you? She goes, no, you spit when you talk. You just, you just, like, pah, pah, pah. My wife likes to drink wine. You, like the, you ladies like to drink the wine? You, drink, you wine drinkers? Yeah. And she watches the Hallmark Channel. And she cries. She drinks wine and cries. I came home the other day and there's about this much wine left in the, in the bottle and she's from the TV. So she's, 
<laughs> don't do it. Oh, don't do it, you stupid bitch. Don't go in that church. Don't go in that church. I go, what are you watching? She goes, our wedding video. <laughs> You guys have been great. I've been Chicago Steve. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Come back and see me. Good night. Thank you. Congratulations. You guys, keep it going for Steve Barkley. Oh, my goodness. Oh, man. How do we do, guys? We, you guys have a good time on a Friday night, yes? Was it worth it? Yes, coming out? Good, man, good. Continue uh, laughing, and, and that's, what, that's what he would want. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's good. I'm glad that you came out. I'm glad you guys all came out. Uh, for you guys uh, local, please always keep coming back and see us again. Uh, for those of you who have uh, never been here before, but, uh, you know, fucking make an effort. Come out. You know what I'm saying? Shit. Uh, no, uh, give it up one more time for your headliner, Mr. Steve Barkley. Thanks for coming.